This video is going to be about what is a power meter. Let's talk about power meters. What are they? What's a watt and how does it work? How a power meter works is um, if, if you were to take off this plastic part here and this plastic part there, you would see the spider would extend and on the spider there would be these strain gauges. And what these strain gauges are, these sensors that are attached to the metal and, and it measures the amount of flex in the crank. And that amount of flex that happens, it gets calculated into, into watts. Back in the olden days, Uli, the owner of uh, SRM, is probably going to, uh, I hope I get my maths right here, but back in the olden days, we used to have to calibrate your own crank quite a lot to work out the slope. Now, the reason why you'd have to do this is because even though that all the strain gauges are the same, the, the, the material properties can be different, if, if you understand me. How the strain gauges are, are placed on the spider, just how, the, if, if they're just a little bit off or something, all could be a little bit different. By working out the slope, by using the amount of torque, by the amount of weight, using the SRM calculations of, of five kilos multiplied by the gravity 9.81, um, times your crank length divided by a thousand would equal the amount of torque and you see what it says in the offset on the SRM you would do that with zero weight and then you work out the difference between that and then you do it on both sides to work out your slope and then you put that into the, the power control and then it'll work out your power and if you've been following me you probably would have known that I, I use longer cranks than normal I used to use 180 cranks a um, bit Bit restricted now and it's because that I worked out with the calculations as I just said before was five kilos multiplied by gravity 9.81 and then multiply that by your crank length divided by 1000 would equal the amount of torque and just by having five kilos on a longer crank would automatically equal more torque so my so I don't want to get into crank length details here but I was always so well, I won't get into it. This will be for another video, but just have that in mind, and that's why I actually went off. So that's how that's how you use to calculate your slope. The reason why you have to set your calibration, and sometimes uh, you have auto calibration in that, is because metal flexes different in different temperatures. So if you have your bike in your garage and the garage is 16 degrees, and then you go outside in the winter and it's 8 degrees, then if you calibrated it for the inside of your garage, you're actually going to have a totally different number when you're riding in the cold. And the same if it's a lot warmer outside. So this is why the auto calibration is pretty cool in the newer features. In the olden days, we didn't have this. And what we had to do in the olden days with the SRM, you actually had to calibrate it before every interval. So your intervals were as correct as possible. What is power? What is watts? What is it? So one watt is equal to one joule per second. One joule per second multiplied by 60 seconds multiplied by 60 seconds in a minute and then 60 minutes in an hour would work out to be 3,600 joules per hour with one watt average. We don't actually think of in joules, we think of kilojoules, so that's 3.6 kilojoules of energy is required to push one watt average. So obviously 100 watts equals 360 kilojoules of energy. When I first went to SRM, I noticed kilojoules, and before that, we used to use heart rate. We used to use polar heart rate on a strap, and the energy output would be in calories. And I was always wondering, why is it calories written on my polar watch and kilojoules written on the SRM power control? So I asked the team uh, doctor back then, and he said, SRM measures the amount of energy that goes through the crank, not what your body does produce that energy. One calorie is 4.184 kilojoules, I think, about that. And it's actually a pretty, coincidence that a kilojoule is 25% of a calorie. So for us pros, um, our efficiency at 25%, we can just look at um, kilojoules and say, well, that's how many calories we burn. If you're not a professional, you're not so efficient, okay, your number's gonna be different. So if you're actually doing a thousand calories, a thousand kilojoules spent per hour, or for your body to spend a thousand calories to do the thousand kilojoules per hour, you actually have to average, I think, around uh, 277.8 or something watts average. I'm going to go um, go back to a bit of history. So crank is 
the power meter five. I'll just have a quick little zoom in there. It is super, super, super old. Now I was given this, I reckon back in, when was I given this? I was given this back in 2005, 2004. Been a long time I've been using SRM power meter. Now this crank here in particular is a full adjustable one. So this, this here you can adjust from 150 mil to 190 mil. Done a lot of testing with it. As you know, I'm, I'm pretty um, into my crank length sizes. So at the back here, I have my SRM bike. Um, yes, trusty Italia seat, the SPO one, my favorite one. I love this seat quite a lot. This bike in particular has a, I upgraded from this one. That's, this, this crank here is a, it's a Durace SRM. Um, this crank in particular is my favorite design that SRM ever did. I wish um, other crank manufacturers followed suit. This has a, a BCD to hold a 53 chain ring, so you can have a normal size chain ring. And the inner ring was a compact, so you can have a compact inner, normal outer. I used to race back at HTC High Road uh, 53, I think 35. It was perfect, I could have a real tight block at the back, cassette, and I'd have uh, gear ranges for everything. Because there's always some moments in a race where you need an easy gear. And just with the uh, you know, 35 um, small chain ring, it just covered everything. And with the tighter block, you had closer ratios. I actually loved it. Um, of course, they have look pedals, because that's what we're sponsored by. Um, <clears throat> this thing here is, seriously, it is bulletproof. I've had this thing since 2005, and it's still going strong. As you can see, it's got a whole bunch of rust on it. It is, I didn't take much care of it. I just used it and abused it. I've done so many sessions on it. I probably put oil on the chain probably only two times uh, the whole time I've used it. But, and it looks horrible, but it's done its job. It's fully adjustable and, and I love the thing. And I've made this wooden deck at the front and you see my SRM there, my SRM heart rate monitor strap. And, it's got a nice drink bottle cage at the front, which, you know, tucks, that's our sponsor too. But more importantly, why cyclists uh, is one of the most elite sports and why we are so fit is because we're the only sport where you can actually measure the true output what an athlete does. So in running, in swimming, um, in all the other sports, you cannot measure it. There's no, there's no device to measure it. So, and what an SRM is, or a power meter in that sense, it's a dyno. If you're into cars, you've probably seen how they run do dynos and see how much horsepower cars have, and that's how they measure the amount of power. And the thing is, what people don't realize is we have these dynos on our bikes. That's how, that's how advanced these systems are. Now, Uli from SRM has, gone, has taken it from, okay, this thing weighs a ton, okay, it is, it is a training one, and the, the ones we have on our bike, the Camp Agnolo SRMs are super light, um, there's a big difference, but we're actually running dynos on our bikes to measure our power port. It's actually, uh, it's a pretty impressive how far we've come. And because of this, this is why cycling is so scientific compared to other sports. We can work out exactly how much energy we're, we're doing. We can really ride on our training zones because also when we're doing performance tests in the lab, when we're doing lactate tests, we're actually measuring the amount of watts we're spending at what lactate levels. So we actually know exactly our zones. Where with just doing things on heart rate, you're guessing quite a lot. And with the power meter and SRM, you're actually getting the true numbers. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please subscribe. Uh, I want to do a lot more of these uh, videos because we're going to have a lot more time with the uh, coronavirus, that's for sure. <laughs> Not racing. So thank you and thanks SRM for sponsoring me, our team. And when I think about it, probably I've been using SRM longer than um, any other professional on the Peloton. So yeah, cool.